Greetings to one and all. Today I am going to discuss about the topic e-learning and e-content development. So what do you mean by e-learning? E-learning refers to electronic learning and electronic content development. Gone are the days when people used to follow traditional teaching where students sat on the floor and the teachers used to deliver content. It was called Gurukula system as the students stayed with the teachers. But this is the new era, the digital era, where everything has changed and now we have adopted computers and internet as the buzzwords of this generation. So how do we prepare digital content in such a way to keep ourselves in pace with the Gen Z and millennials of this generation? We'll watch in this video. So English is commonly adopted as the lingua franca today. Without English, it is very difficult for us to survive in this world as it has become the common language uh, for many countries. So how do we teach English to the students in such a way to make them really attentive to the classes and complete their assignments? So here we are going to study about e-learning where we are going to introduce new strategies and other learning materials and tools for implementing this successfully in your English language teaching classrooms. So uh, today I'm going to talk about this ICT. This feature, Information and Communication Technology, has become uh, a rev has revolutionized the area of education. And uh, the other one that you might be all familiar with is MOOC courses, which is, stands for Massive Open Online Courses, and then OER, which are none other than Open Educational Resources. It means that you can sit right in your homes and do any kind of courses and it is not necessary for you to go and attend classes physically. Maybe pandemic is one of the reasons that has revolutionized the whole uh, type of digitalization of content as we all have adopted the digital technology as ours. We are not digital natives but still we have become so proficient in handling technology and maybe pandemic is one of the reasons and lesson that has taught us to adopt this with ease. So with the rise of technology, it is also important for us to discuss about the effects of social media among the students. So how do we incorporate this social media and social networking in the curriculum of the students and make them uh, really attentive and attracted to the curriculum? So how do we make use of Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp or Twitter in order to cater to the minds of the students and how do we educate them through these social networking platforms and how do we make use of the podcasts or how do we make use of YouTube to generate more entertaining as well as uh, materials that serve for education purposes as well. So e-content is another uh, way for introducing edutainment in uh, the lives of the students. So what is edutainment? Education and entertainment together. So when it is in a boring form of a typical classroom education where the teacher just teaches with the help of a blackboard or a chalk pills and delivers content, the students may lose their attention very easily. And that is the time when we have to switch and update ourselves to digital content and make the students gel and come along with us as we progress towards uh, learning. So in the process of learning, it is not just the teacher who is act actually the active educator, but the students become active learners as well. Because with the help of electronic books and with the help of other mobile technologies, applications, students become active participants because they are already uh, aware of the era of, era of internet and this is one of the reasons why we have to stick and develop ourselves, equip ourselves with the uh, internet technology which is used for education. And the other uh, component which is very much essential for us to know is the gamification of the content that is possible in e-learning. So how do we make content 
as games how do we create content that is entertaining as well as educating so there are so many gamification tools that are available online be it free versions or paid versions that the educators can use to train the students in such a way and now i want to uh, remind you all of the two types of learning that you might be all familiar with they are the blended learning and flipped learning models that are that play a crucial role in the e content development so how do we blend the both the online and offline technologies to create a, a, an environment that is convenient to the students and how do we flip the use of technologies as well so blended learning refers to using both online and offline technologies for example a teacher can deliver content in the classroom and ask their students to complete their assignment uh, at home and upload that in their google classroom so that becomes a kind of blended learning because of blended learning it is uh, that the students will not get bored to actually listen to screen for a large amount of hours and also they will not get bored with tradition of traditional offline lectures so blended learning is not just blend of both online and offline learning but it is also a blend of both fun and education education parts educative parts as well so what is flipped learning so when you're talking about flipped learning the teacher is no more a teacher but he becomes a facilitator a tutor it is not a one way process education and learning has become a two way process where both the teacher and the student participate so flipped learning and blended learning has changed uh, e learning totally and it has helped the students uh, to move towards their future for the better i would like to talk about the special features of e learning and we are, when we are about to talk about the special features the number one thing that uh comes to my mind is this feature of interactivity so in the traditional classrooms obviously the teachers and students can be interactive but what is this interactivity in a digital context so it is not about a student answering the teacher uh just through audio or something but he can also communicate through chats he can communicate through emails or he could communicate through Uh, a voice message or a video message so interactivity is possible interactivity has become way better in e learning and this is one of the crucial features of e learning as well and when we are preparing e content the second feature is the uh, benefit of synchronicity and asynchronous learning so what do you mean by synchronous feature that means that you have to stay online and deliver content on live so when you when as a teacher or an educator delivers content on live for example in a zoom platform or a google meet the student can interact with the teacher either through the chat box or uh, by unmuting and then talking to them so that becomes synchronous learning where learning uh, uh, takes place on live what do you mean by asynchronous learning then asynchronous learning refers to learning that happens at one's own one's own pace it, it is otherwise called as self paced learning where it is not necessary for the student to be always be on live or the teacher to be always be on live but the student can learn the content at their own pace 24 by 7 so it means that the students will all also have their own uh, commitments and they can complete their assignments or they can complete their learning do their group projects and collaborate with one another at time that is uh, favorable to them so that is asynchronous mode of learning these types of learnings uh, learning is not possible these features cannot be 100% applicable in a traditional classroom but yes in a digital classroom this is possible so when we are about to talk about uh, the types of learning or uh, digital content i would like to discuss about the various other types of digital content that are available the number one is the digital print so digital print is very much similar to the usual printed materials that we follow in the conventional classrooms uh, the only thing is that digital print can be available in the form of e books which are none other than electronic books or in the form of mobile applications where you can download a book and then you can uh, study it 
and we can also include hyperlinks in this digital print. Hyperlink re refers to uh, when you when you click on a hyperlink, it will take you to another page. So yes, the number one format is digital print. The other few examples for digital print can be e-journals, uh, e-newspapers, websites, uh, e-catalogs, e-archives, and uh, research repositories. The second one is digital audio. So what do you mean by digital audio? Uh, like I would say that before maybe a decade or so, we were so uh, uh, reliable on compact discs, otherwise called as CDs, which, was, uh, which were used to transport files in audio or video formats. But now maybe uh, the uh, compact discs have become obsolete and we have adopted to other modes of transfer of communication like pen drives and uh, podcasts especially audio podcasts. So yes, digital audio includes audio podcasts or uh, the files that can be transferred through uh, compact disks and so and so. The third one is digital video. So what is this digital video? Digital video refers to uh, YouTube content or the content that a teacher creates and uploads it in her, his or her Google Drive and shares it with their students. So digital video is another form of uh, e-learning. And one more thing that I'd like to tell is even the students can be encouraged to create their own learning materials and upload it uh, as, as the form of assignments. And the next one is web-based apps. Web-based apps that include uh, so many other applications that are necessary for teaching as well as learning. And one thing that I'd like to encourage our students is they can, uh, literature students can form uh, good bonds with students from computer sciences and create apps that help in teaching English to normal or ordinary learners as well. So the digital content creation tools may include visual content creation tools, image sourcing, uh, interactive content creation tools, infographic and chart maker tools, PowerPoint presentation tools, audio creation tools and video creation tools. So finally, when we're about to conclude, we could say that e-learning and e-content development has revolutionized the whole uh, genre or area of education in such a way that we are upskilling ourselves every day and giving the students the best we can. And the students are also learning so much in this process. And uh, the teachers who are not digital natives, as I said already, we have so much to upskill. Maybe that is a slight uh, demerit because it takes so much to learn. But once we get the hang of it, I'm sure everybody can entirely transform this uh, process of learning together and create a favorable environment for both the teachers as well as the students. Especially through collaboration, uh, through collaborative projects, peer learning and everything we could do wonders in the field of education through e-content development. But there are again some demerits or disadvantages in this uh, area of e-content development. For example, when we send e-content to the students, sometimes the students who do not have proper attention span, they may get uh, distracted and they can open other tabs and that can sometimes lead to internet addiction. So that is one of the disadvantages. And the next thing is plagiarism, where plagiarism has just crept into every nooks and crevices of the world, academic world. And so it is very difficult for us, uh, very important for us to curb ourselves from this disadvantage of plagiarism. And the next thing is, uh, uh, so yes, overall I would say that e-learning and e-content development is essential for this generation to help the students of e-learning and e-content development is essential for this generation to help the uh, students become better citizens in the future. Thank you.